Hello study partners, today we will be talking about concentration effect, second gas effect and diffusion hypoxia. So in concentration effect, firstly we'll, this applies to inhalational anesthetics. So in concentration effect the concept is, so when there is con continuous gas supply to the lungs, whenever there is supply, the gas from the alveoli gets taken up into the bloodstream and it gets into the body, right? So generally what happens is whenever, okay, let's uh, draw simple diagrams. If this, if let's say there is some gas here, this enters via the lipid membrane of the alveolus and the blood vessel and, uh, and enters into the circulation. So generally what happens is until the concentration here is equal to the concentration here, there will be continuous entry of the gas from the alveoli into the bloodstream. But nitrous oxide has a special property that it diffuses very fast and it can attain concentration much faster than the other gases present in the alveoli in the bloodstream. So generally what it does is, now let's say, the generally nitrous oxide is given in a high concentration. So for example, uh, let's uh, take, uh, if let's take the amount of gas present in the alveoli is 70% nitrous oxide, 29% oxygen and 1% halothene. I'll, let's, uh, I'm writing this halothane because I want to use the same example for second gas effect also. So what happens is generally when alveolus has this much blood vessel as it as we all as we already discussed that there will be e equal amount the diffusion takes place until the uh, amount equilibrates on both the sides. So what we expect to happen is after this amount enters the alveoli, we expect concentration to be 35% concentration of nitrous oxide to be 35% in alveoli and 35% in bloodstream. So after this portion of blood leaves and by the time next portion of gas enters, we expect it to be again 70% and again it uh, equilibrates and becomes 35% 35% right so this does not happen for nitrous oxide because it diffuses very fast so what happens here is as it flows it gets only it now the constant you think that first it was 70% uh, now as it diffuses it becomes only 35% but since it is diffusing fast it can pull even more so what it does is initially now as the gas diffuses we expect it to be 35% so now it has become 35%, right? This 35% is actually 35 out of 35 plus 29 plus 1. So that will be 35 by 65, that is 63%. So initially out of 100, it was 70% nitrous oxide. 29% oxygen and 1% halothane but by the time 35% of nitrous oxide has diffused 29% of oxygen and 1% halothane have not yet diffused so this will be 35 by 65 that is 63% so what was expected to be only 35% has reached to 63% so what happens in later breaths as you can calculate and see this will again reach 70% that is it will tend to become 69 by 99. So this is how nitrous oxide concentrates itself within the alveoli. So this effect is called as concentration effect. Now this concentration effect has been used for gases which do not diffuse that easily like Halothane. So we take 1% halothane and we use carrier gas as nitrous oxide. So when 1% halothane is used with nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide as it tends to concentrate itself by pulling more gas from the anesthetic machine, when connected along with halothane, it pulls along hal more halothane as well. So what it does, nitrous oxide apart from concentrating itself, it also increases the concentration of 
another add on anesthetic gas that is added along with it so this is called as second gas effect okay now last concept for today is diffusion hypoxia diffusion hypoxia is quite simple so this occurs generally after you stop stop the nitrous oxide inhalation from the machine so once the surgery is done you stop the nitrous oxide so what happens there is high concentration in the body than the alveoli so this again uses the same concentr uh, concentration effect principle and it concentrates more in the alveoli and by doing that it reduces the concentration of oxygen so until the entire nitrous oxide tends to get washed out there is very difficulty in maintaining oxygen concentration and this leads to hypoxia so what do we do we uh, raise the uh, saturate we raise the concentration of oxygen so high in the alveoli that how much ever nitrogen comes to displace oxygen it will not be it the oxygen concentration will not fall so low that it will lead to hypoxia so what do we do we use 100% oxygen and ventilate the patient so then there is even if the nitrous oxide diffuses back into the alveoli it will not be sufficient enough to concentrate itself in such a way that it will it can cause hypoxia so the diffusion hypoxia is something that occurs when the patient is recovering from anesthesia and this is avoided by ventilating or by giving 100% oxygen to the patient okay. there is one thing you need to know diffusion hypoxia is also called as fink effect this kind of reminds me of my joke i had one sir who used to tell for for pa so it's like instead of pink it is fink effect so yeah that's all for today so uh, so glad you guys joined in for this discussion so don't forget to keep studying hard you're going to do it this time at any cost please don't forget to like comment and share this video and do let me know what topic you want to discuss for the next time i'm quite glad that few of you uh, sent messages regarding the discussion that you wanted discussion for anesthesia topics i hope this is clear right now so next let me know what subject should we discuss next so until then this is your study partner signing off